story time with Mr. K, the Thanksgiving episode. How is everybody today? Good. I did a singy song. A what? Singy, singy song. Singy, singy song? I, I, I mean, bok, 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 bok. <laughs> all right, that's all very good. All right. Today we are reading Gobble, Gobble, Mr. Wobble, written by Becky Cummings. Illustrated by Susanna Zvobodova. Word traveled quickly on the farm that the grand Thanksgiving Day feast was Thursday, just a few days away. Farmer Joe came to the barn to share the news with Wobble the turkey. This year, we'll be having you for dinner. Oh, it's no. time you got ready, Farmer Joe said with a smile. <gasps> What's that mean? The turkey's gonna run away! <laughs> Why would the turkey have to run away? Because they're going to eat him. Yeah. Wobble couldn't believe it. His eyes popped open. He shook all over. I'm the dinner guest? He exclaimed with joy. Look, he thinks he's the guest at dinner, not for dinner. He sprang into a happy dance, flapping his feathers and creating quite the dust storm. This would be his first Thanksgiving Day feast. He wanted to be ready. He started to prepare himself. Look, the cow and the mouse are like, oh, this guy doesn't realize that the farmer wants to eat him. Yeah. On Sunday, he fancied his feathers and plucked out the old ones. Then he fluffed his gobbler. Next, he used a little turkey drool to spike his hair. Ew. Yeah. Wobble admired himself in the mirror. Marveloso. Marveloso. Look, and I think the mice over here are trying to plan his escape. Ooh. On Monday, Farmer Linda came to feed Wobble extra food. There you go, baby. You eat up and get big and strong, she said with joy. Wobble couldn't believe his luck. Extra food this week, too? Score, he whooped. He made sure to eat carefully so his feathers stayed neat. He did not want to be sticky or dirty on the big day. Why are they feeding the turkey so much, do you think? So we can get big and strong. Yeah, for what? To get, to eat the turkey. Yeah, I know, what? Oh, look, the mice are packing him a bag to get away. On yeah. Tuesday, Wobble worked on his perfect gobble to greet the farmer and his human guests. First, he sang a few warm-up songs about some farmer called Old MacDonald. Next, he let out the loudest gobble that startled the cows to moo, which made ducks quack. The barn got loud. Gobbly hee ho, gobbly doo hoo. Quack, quack, quack. Do you guys know Old MacDonald? Yeah, Old MacDonald yeah, had a farm. E I E I O. On a farm, they had a turkey. E I E I O. Very good. Very good, guys. On Wednesday, Wobble planned to go to sleep nice and early. He was ready to celebrate a day of giving and love. Wobble finished reading his book about good table manners. Then he said a little prayer. I'm so thankful to be the dinner guest. I love Thanksgiving. Thursday was Thanksgiving. The barn mouse kept trying to make Wobble take a walk outside, but he would not go. He could not be late for dinner. Look, the mouse is trying to pull him away, saying, Come on, you've got to get out of here. They're going to have you for Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Finally, the farmer came to the barn with his axe in hand. Time for dinner, my friend. Let's go, exclaimed Farmer Joe. <gasps> oh, no. They went straight to the woodpile, and the farmer chopped some pieces of wood for the fire. These will do. Now come inside. Whew, that was a close one, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Farmer Joe threw the wood in the fire. The house lit up with warmth as the smell of freshly baked apple pie filled the room. Then Farmer Linda opened the oven and steam from the most delicious saucy lasagna poured out. The smells were almost too much for Wobble. He shook with happiness. The family gathered quickly at the table and the farmer pulled out a chair for his beloved turkey. Time for a family feast, my friend, said Farmer Joe. Mr. Wobble, would you like to say, I mean, 
Gobble a few words. Wobble let it all fly out. Gobble a ho, gobble a two, gobble tea, gobble dee, gobble da. I am thankful for your love towards me and my beautiful barn where I live. But today, most of all, I am thankful for lasagna. That's lasagna. Lasagna? Yeah. Lasagna is like a big pasta, like a big sheet of spaghetti with sauce. Okay. Yeah. And cheese. Happy Thanksgiving! And like all these animals are like, fuel up with fruit. Go nuts for nuts. Got greens? Seeds make you strong. They're all saying, don't eat me. Eat, eat other food. The end. What do you guys think? It was good because they didn't eat the turkey. Why was the farmer tricky? I don't think he was tricking him. I think he was just having him over for dinner. He wanted to have him over as a dinner guest. He wasn't tricking him. But I don't he think. said they're going to have turkey. They're going to have him for turkey dinner. No, they said we're going to have you for dinner, which means like we're going to have you over for dinner. Like, sometimes we have our friends over for dinner. We don't eat our friends, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so some, not everyone eats turkey on Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, but, but I'm going to eat turkey. Well, okay, yeah. I mean, that's... My I'm going to eat turkey, turkey, pie. The turkey pie. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. We can eat I'm... turkey pie is not yucky. Turkey pie? Yeah. I don't know. It sounds delicious. I've never had it. But um, I... right, everyone do your best turkey voice on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. I appreciate you taking that seriously, June. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Story Time with Mr. K. How are we doing, guys? Good, good. Good. All right, today we're going to read This Book is Perfect by Ron Karras. Artwork by Arthur Lynn. Oh, hello there. I'm Finn the Frog. And this, my friend, is the cleanest book you will ever see. Some even say that it's perfect. But I don't really like to brag. I know, I know, most frogs are slimy and dirty. But not me. No way. You see, I am the tidiest frog you will ever meet. I think you're going to be quite impressed with what you are about to see. Now then, shall we begin? Go on and turn the page. Ah! What is on your fingers? Are you eating cheesy <laughs> puffs while reading my book? What are you thinking? You can't eat cheesy puffs while reading this book. Wipe your hands and put that snack away right now. Hey, wipe your hands. Wipe your hands and put your snack away. Whew, that's better. A little elbow grease goes a long way when keeping things neat, you know. And after all... It could have been worse. It could have been... Grape juice! Are you kidding me? Sticky, drippy grape juice all over my perfect pages? Listen, kid. If there is anything you've got to know in life, it's this. Grape juice always stains. These pages are supposed to be white, not purple. This is not good, kid. Not good. Drat. This mop is worthless against such a mess. First the fingerprints, now the grape juice. I swear, this day couldn't get any. What have you done? This is a nightmare. It has to be. Any minute now, I'm going to wake up and find out there's not gum stuck on my page. It will be fine. Really, any minute now. Wake up, Finn. Wake up now. <laughs> it's not working. I don't think I'm dreaming. Breathe, Finn. Breathe. There, there must be something I can use to get that sticky thing off my book. Mayday! Mayday! This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. My page is ripping. This is a disaster. I was so excited to show you my book, but now it's ruined forever. Ugh. I just want all this to be over. Maybe you should just close the book and end my misery. Wait! Don't close the book. Do you see what I see? This mess is attracting flies! 
Don't you know those tiny troublemakers throw up every time they land? Yuck! Even the thought of fly barf on my book is making me queasy. Shoo, fly, shoo! Go away! That's not nice, right? To, to shoo the fly away? Yeah. I suppose not. No, that's a, that's a good point. Oh, no! That useless fly just landed on my book! Think, Finn, think. How does one get rid of flies? Hmm, I wonder if my vacuum has a turbo mode for sucking up flies. How do how do, how should he get rid of the fly? Um, with a vacuum cleaner. What do you think, June? Um, with, with a bulldozer. With a bulldozer? You get rid of flies with a bulldozer? Yeah. That seems rather extreme. Let's see what he does. No! Don't smash it, kid! Do you have any idea the kind of mess that would leave behind? I mean, all the guts and other oozy stuff that comes out of a fly? Not on my book. There's got to be another way. What What? What other way could he get rid of the fly? Uh, maybe put on his hand and throw it away. Um, I should think put the vacuum cleaner up the book and uh, vacuum the fly. But wait a minute, guys. What is he? Frog! <gasps> he could He could bite it off because he's a like, That's right. Yeah, like let's that. Let's see. Let's see. Me? Why are you looking at me? What do you expect me to do? Oh, right. <laughs> ah. I knew that. Yeah, you did. He got it. Mmm, delish. I almost forgot how good those things taste. You know, I still believe cleanliness is the best policy. But maybe this mess wasn't so terrible after all. Come to think of it, without your help, I never would have gotten these tasty snacks. And besides, if I can't live with the mess, I can always turn the page. <laughs> Perfect. You guys like that book? Yes. What did we learn about cheesy poofs? <laughs> 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 Oh, is that what he calls them in here? Cheesy puff? Yeah, he calls them cheesy puffs. Yeah. And what does this stuff say? Oh, well, we read this already. It says, what is on your fingers? Are you eating cheesy puffs while reading my book? What are you thinking? <laughs> so, the lesson learned is don't eat cheesy puffs while reading his book. Are you guys eating cheesy puffs? Yeah. Yeah. What did I tell you guys about eating cheesy puffs? Don't eat cheesy puffs while recording, Mr. K. <laughs> this video we're making is too perfect. Don't eat cheesy puffs. <laughs> cheesy puffs. <laughs> while recording, Mr. K. Stop eating cheesy puffs. Cheesy puffs. Don't touch me. You'll get me all orange. <laughs> Welcome to story time with... Mrs. K. Mrs. K. Mrs. K. No, Mrs. K. Mrs. Mr. K. is out. Mr. K. What, you prefer Mr. K? Yeah. What's up with that? Mrs. Yeah. K, June. It's Mrs. K. Let's embrace the change. Mrs. K. Mrs. K. Woo. Okay, so today we're reading Luca's Special Blanket, A Gift of Love from Grandma, written by Denise Dennis. And illustrated by... Ross Kinnaird. Stella Hong. Not Ross Kinnaird, but still love Ross Kinnaird. Okay. Luca's grandma lives far away on a tiny farm where she has lots of special animals. Far away. She lives over the hills. Kind of like Nana does, right? Mm -hmm. It's a long way to get there. There is a tiny three-legged dog. You see that? Yeah. Three legs and then one special leg. And a cow with only half of a horn and no tail. Ah. And there's a cat who can't see. Ah. These are very special animals. Yeah, but, but it's a little bit funny. Oh, they're all very special. They're just unique. Okay. And best of all, there is her special sheep whose wool has lots of colors. Um, let me tell you what colors okay. they are. Okay, it's... And the uh, okay. colors are blue, yellow, red, green. Yep. And orange. That's right. 
Have you ever seen a sheep like that in your entire life? No. That's amazing. I wish I could see that. Luca loves visits from Gray and Gran, who always wears a pink and purple jacket. She tells him all about her special animals. The sheep is his favorite. Luca is always sad when it's time for Grandma to go back to her farm. He stands with his mommy and waves as she walks away. She waves back at him and blows him a kiss. Just like that. Gran Gran, he weeps. I know, honey, Mommy says. Grand Grand will be back as soon as she can. Grandma is sad to leave Luca, too. When she gets home, she finds that her house feels big and quiet. It looks very cozy. She has a fire. She has some decorations. But she misses her grandson, Luca. Yeah, I think, I think it's Christmas. It does seem like it's Christmas time, right? Yeah, it is Christmas. I think there's she has the perfect Christmas tree outside of her house. She decides to make Luca a special gift. She knits him a soft, warm blanket using wool from his favorite sheep. Look at that. It looks exactly like the sheep. All of the different colors and squares. Who's that on her wall? Luke. Luca. Luca. Yeah. He's a superhero. Yeah, I think that was our Halloween. Maybe. Grandma puts the blanket in a box, wraps the box up in tissue paper, and ties it with a bow. Then she walks to the post office and sends it by special delivery. One morning, the postman arrives with something for Luca, a parcel with a note which says, My dearest Luca, I made this blanket on my farm with wool from my sheep. When nights are cold, it will keep you warm. In each stitch is a special kiss for all the days I will miss. Love, Grand Grand. That is so nice. Luca loves his blanket. It smells like cinnamon and warmth, and most of all, his Grand Grand. He names it Blanky. Hang on, look. Ah, he has a Christmas tree. He does, it is Christmas time. Is he putting his blanket on the Christmas tree? No, he's not. Okay. Let's see I what, think he is. Let's see what he does with his blanket. Luca and Blanky become best of friends. He takes Blanky everywhere, and together they get into lots of mischief. Uh-oh. Do you know what mischief is? What? Um, Like silly things. They do a lot of silly things. Sometimes they are superheroes. I knew, what? I knew he was a superhero. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Blanky is a kite. Blanky is also an excellent picnic blanket. What? And a wonderful magic carpet. I think he has a very good imagination. But best of all, Luca loves to hold Blanky while he sleeps. With Blanky close, Luca has magical dreams of extraordinary animals and super cool machines. Wow. But one morning, while Luca and Blanky are playing hide and seek with Daddy, Blanky snags on the table. <gasps> this is the beginning of a rough day for Blanky. What happened? Blanky broke. Yeah. At lunch, Blanky's corner gets dipped into Luca's soup. Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> and then at dinner, Luca doesn't like his vegetables. Almost all the Brussels sprouts ended up on Blanky. Look at those. He's just tossing them all over. Yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's like, let me just get rid of those. Mm -hmm. By bath time, Blanky is looking a little dingy. And after bath time, Blanky is a little wet too. So are mommy and daddy. Because he's splishing and a splashing. By bedtime, Blanky is dingy, fuzzy, messy, and wet. But Luca doesn't care. Blanky goes everywhere. Time for bed, Blanky, he says. But Mommy doesn't let damp and dingy Blanky into Luca's bed. Instead, Blanky gets a special wash and is hung out to dry. The next day, he is given back to Luca, nice and clean. Luca is pleased to have Blanky back, but something's wrong. What could be wrong? It's still messy and dirty and ripped. Yeah, it's still ripped. Let's see what he says. 
He cuddles Blanky close to try to figure out what it could be. The grand-grand smell is gone, he says sadly. The week after, Grandma comes for another visit. She has her special wool inside a basket and promptly sits down to repair Blanky's fuzzy bits. This makes Luca very happy, especially when Grand Grand makes him hot chocolate and her yummy cinnamon rolls. When Grand Grand leaves, Luca cuddles Blanky close. What do you think his Blanky will smell like now? I I think junk. Junk? What? His Grand Grand was holding it and she made really yummy stuff. You no, it smell like those. Like cinnamon rolls. Yeah. Yeah. And it's no, like hot chalk. Yes, hot chocolate. Bouncing hot chalk. That's just your cool, shortened way to say it? Yeah. Okay, hot chalk. Oops, we just spilled coffee. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Okay, ready for the last page? Yeah. Okay. And Blanky smells just right. Look how cozy he looks. And what's all around him? Hearts. Because he feels happy. 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 <laughs> happy and love from his grandma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so nice. Mom, can we wipe that up? Well, how do we think, what do we think about mommy's blanket that my Nana made me a long time know. ago? Look at this. So just like Luca's blanket, mine ripped too. It's okay. Yeah. No, no. It didn't rip, rip like him because Luca it has got a big it. Hole. It has no, a big hole. No, Luca ripped it like on the side. It, it's not like Luca's. Yeah. Mine has a big hole, but it's still okay because I love it because it reminds me of my Nana. And, and, and mine is not. Yours Nana? does not have any holes in it or rips. Yours it, is still so nice. What's your Nana? Yeah. My Nana is your Nana's mommy, and she has the same name as Junebug. Her name was Junie Rose, and my grandpa would say, Junie Rose, I love your nose. Mom, could you get the paper towel so you can clean that up? I will. I will clean is up. Is Junie Rose still real? <laughs> Junie Rose is no longer with us. Nope. She is not. She is but not. I'm a new girl, She right? is not here anymore. I'm a new girl, She right? would have loved you if she got to meet you sometime. So, is she dead? Yes. Yeah, I've never seen her. Nope, but I could show you pictures. We have pictures at our house. But you know, is Nana dead? No, 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 no. Your Nana sees you all the time, and she loves you. But that's why this blanket is so special to me, because I don't get to see my Nana but I get to hug this blanket, and it keeps me warm, and it reminds me of the things uh, my is Nana your, did. Is your, is your Nana dead? Yes, but it's okay, because I remember her all the time, and I hold this blanket, and it reminds me of her. Sorry. That's okay. I'm going to get blankets. Okay, everybody. That I was get a um, towel for you, okay? What did you think about that book? Um, I thought it was good. You think it was good? Mm -hmm. What kind of feelings did it give you? Love, love for you. Love for me? Aww. Aww. Well, if you ever have kids, if you decide to have kids and you want me to make them a blanket, guess what? what? I'll do it. Yeah, but I could call you on that if my kids want that. Yeah. So if your kids want a blanket, you'll say, ring, ring, ring. Mom, mm -hmm. my kids want a blanket. Yeah. Yep. What do you think it would look like? It could be my kid's grandma. I could. Or you could be their Nana. Okay, we'll decide. Let's do Nana. What if they, what if you have kids and they want to call me Mima? They can call you that if you want. Mima? Okay. I can teach them how, how they could call you Nana. Nana, you think that? Okay. Yeah, because grandmas are older. <laughs> grandmas yeah. are older? Yeah, yeah, but. I don't know if that's science. Well, we my grandma's old. You're okay. Yeah, what's this? Let's you, edit that out. Yeah, what's this do you, Nana? Okay. Thanks, everybody, for watching the very first story time with Mrs. K. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Story Time with Mr. K. 
experts, this, or other great books, or to watch more videos, visit StorytimeWithMrK.com. See you next time. Bye! Bye.